He wants to show his love to us. And by the way, our theme today is born to be loved. Let's see how that fits our scriptures for today. So let's take a moment and let that love shower upon us. And be thankful to God. Think of some things you're thankful. Oh God, we worship you and we thank you for all that you've done for us. Thank you for the love you've shown to us. And we ask now that you would be with us, be present with us, so we might know that you're here with us and that you love us. We pray that you would guide our service. We ask that you would speak to us in our hearts and speak to us through the scriptures. Help us to take the things that we learn and Use them to change our lives, that we might be the children you've called us to be. Thank you for all you're going to do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Our psalm is 121. I will lift up my eyes to the hills. From where will my help come? My help comes from the Lord who made the heaven and the earth. You will not let your foot be moved. He who keeps you will not slumber. He who keeps Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from evil. He will keep your life. The Lord will keep your going out and your coming in from this time on and forevermore. Amen. Our next song is, it is the cry of my heart, 2165, in your faith and Scripture, I think of another top 
an adult Sunday school for many years in the Methodist Church in Minneapolis, and, and she had a theory as she uh, was teaching about this that God might have called a lot of people before he called Abraham. He was just the first one that said yes. <laughs> I thought this is kind of right there as we read this deal. Uh, you know, I've thought about that a lot through the years that there might have been a lot of people that he made this call to, but nobody but Abraham said yes to him. The Lord said to Abram, Leave your country, your people, and your father's household, and go to the land I will show you. I will make you into a great nation, and I will bless you. I will make your name great, and you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and whoever curses you, I will curse. And all the peoples on earth will be blessed through you. So Abraham left as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from, Har Har from Haran. He took his wife Sarai, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated, and the people they had acquired in Haran. And they set out for the land of Canaan, and they arrived there. Thank you, Tom. And now we're going to uh, sing an old favorite, The Old Red Cross, verses 1, 2, and 4. It's found in your hymn book.
Romans 4, 1 through 5. What shall we say that Abraham, our forefather, discovered in this matter? If, in fact, Abraham was justified by works, he had something to boast about, but not before God. What does the scripture say? Abraham believed God, and it was credited to him as righteousness. Now, when a man works, his wages are not credited to him as a gift, but as an obligation. However, to the man who does not work, but trusts God who justifies the wicked, his faith is credited as righteousness. Thank you, Tom. And Ed, did you have a devotional today that you wanted to read? Yeah, yes. Did you want to read it there for us? Yes. It's, uh, this is day number, this is from Joyce Myers. She has every day, day life, and if you want to listen to her, she's on 7.30 in the mornings, and on uh, Impact, and, uh, and uh, TBN, and she's on at 12 o'clock. And here's what she says. You will see the goodness of God. I remain confident of this. I will see the goodness of God in the land of the living. Wait for the Lord. Be strong and take heart and wait for the Lord. This comes from Psalms 27, 13 through 14. Are you confident that you see the goodness of God during your lifetime? Some people think everyone will be great when they get to heaven, but they fail to expect good things when they are alive on earth. The Amplified Bible rendered verse 13 of this scripture this way. What would you become of me? Have I not believed I would see the Lord's goodness in the land of the Lord? I think the psalmist was saying that without the hope of seeing God's goodness, he would become discouraged and perhaps even impressed. Hope is powerful. It keeps going forward and all circumstances look hopeless. The Bible says that Abraham had no reason to hope, but he still hoped in faith that he would see God's promise come true, and he did. Psalms 14 tells us to wait on the Lord, which means we are to wait with expectation that something good is going to happen in any moment. Expect God to do good things in your life, not necessarily because you deserve it, but because he is good, be confident that you will see his goodness. And you want me to read the prayer that she has? Yeah, you can go ahead and read that. Well, Father, I am excited to see all the good things that you will do in my life. I wait on you with hope and expectations. Thank you. Amen. Well, that fits along with the scripture reading we had in Abraham, didn't it? Yes. That was pretty amazing. All right. Um, it is this time we have our joys and concerns. Um, Plenty of us are experiencing in, in the community and in our church family now, experiencing the stomach flu that's going around and there's other symptoms with that. So let's pray for healing from this. Uh, I know it's really devastated some of the schools. Um, for healing from the stomach virus, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Tomorrow there's also some COVID-19 coming into Pittsburgh uh, now. Nursing home down there has uh, four of the staff is a single sentence. I we know about it because this my brother in law's mother got the COVID. She's 98. She's a toughie though. She's still keeping alive. So let's pray for the COVID that's still raising, um, showing up and just off and on in various places. So we need protection uh, for the people there, and, and especially at Lindsburg at the nursing home. So, protection from COVID, Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers. Yeah, I think two blessings God has given me this yes. last week. I went, uh, I had my stools acting up, and God says, so I have to tell Jim Murphy, and God says, Jim Murphy is going to solve your problem. Your stool is going to start working when he works on it. And sure did. And I had another with my light on my car. And I went to 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 Bainston's, and I have a very Christian friend named Nathan, and he is he's the the uh, overall everything there. He went out and looked at it, and lo and behold, I had a gas cap that was getting bad, and I had to do something with that. So I'm thankful for God for that. How He's we've well, been praying for your plumbing, so we're glad that that worked out, and then we've been and uh, glad your car worked out. So. Yes. 
So two blessings. I'm, I'm going to, uh, funny, I'm going to still, um, can everybody still be playing for me for that? Okay. Uh, but so far, we're, we're, we're going off the work. So, uh, prayers, for, uh, prayers for continued uh, help for Ed, and, uh, and thanks for what he, God has done so far. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayers and our praise. Thanks. Anything else?
Let's take a moment to pray to God in our hearts and talk to Him about things that are going on that maybe we couldn't pray about aloud. And uh, let Him answer those things for us. But also that we might make sure that our hearts are clear and clean before Him. Thank you, O oh God, for all that you've done for us. Thank you for the joy that we have in Jesus. We pray now that you would bless those in our congregation who are still hurting, who need healing. We pray that you bring healing for those that need help with repairs and uh, finances. We pray that you would bless them. Bless those in our community who are facing the same issues that we face here in this congregation with help with all the the troubles that life brings here on earth. We pray for those who are suffering spiritually that you would uh, make yourself known to them. For those who are suffering with, from physical ailments or injuries, we pray that you would bring healing to them. Thank you for those who are willing to take leadership in our local community. I pray that you would bless them for their work, uh, guide them, and help them to lead us in a way that honors you and is best for the community. We pray for those in our state and federal level that uh, are appointed or elected to office. We pray that you would bless them and guide them, that they might lead us uh, in a way that is right for our nation and deliver us from the, from the easy ways that may be the wrong ways. Uh, that you would give them wisdom and help them to listen to you as you... As you Send forth your wisdom to them. We pray for those who protect us, for those who protect us in the military. We pray that you would bless them and keep them safe and healthy and provide for them and their families. We pray for those who protect us on a local level. We pray that you would bless them. We bless the police and the law enforcement and the firefighters and the EMTs and other emergency responders and those who take care of our utilities. We pray that you would bless them for their work. Keep them safe and healthy. We pray for our farmers and ranchers and uh, those who transport our goods and anyone else who is in the process, who works in the process of getting things to us that we need to survive. We pray that you would bless them for their work and, and uh, provide for them that they might be able to continue to do the work for us. We pray for our teachers and staff. We pray that you would bless them for their work. And for the students, we pray that you would bless them and help them to learn the things that they need to learn to be successful and help them to stay safe uh, during these times of these various sicknesses that come through. And pray that you would protect them and, and help them uh, also to learn things that will help them day to day as they face uh, the various, various challenges of today's world. We pray for our hospitals. We pray that you bless the staff, provide for them, keep them safe and healthy. Bless the patients, comfort them and bring them healing. We pray that you provide all the staff that is needed and all the finances that's needed for our health care. We pray for those who are persecuted for their faith. We pray that you bless them and especially those who are in jail or prison because of their faith in Jesus Christ, that you would give them the strength that they need and endurance and provide for their families and help them to be encouraged by your presence and know your love and enjoy even in the midst of their suffering. We pray for our missionaries, that you would bless them and provide for them and help them to reach uh, people, especially in lands that are difficult to get the gospel to. We pray for those who are incarcerated. We pray that you would bless them, uh, show your love to them, 
help them to be reconciled to you and to their families and to their communities. And now we will pray together the prayer that you taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. At this time, we'll receive your offer.
No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into this world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Thanks be to God. Amen. Thank you, Tom. It is the word of God for the people of God. And it is for us to give thanks for God. So, everyone knows, I shouldn't say everybody knows, but just as Tom said, one of the most common um, verses that we, we see displayed, John 3.16, but also the, the phrase, you must be born again. So, the word is out there, but if we don't apply it right, we'll be like Nicodemus, we'll be a little confused by it, because how can it happen? I've heard even Christians who have been in the church for a while say, well, I don't get that. Because it is the beginning of a new life. It's, the, it's one, we were just born in the world because we came and didn't have much choice. But the other one, we make a choice to decide to let God be born uh, be in us and to change our life. And, to, and to, to give us that new life, a, a new journey. To start over when we kind of messed up the first one. So you must be born again, and it was confusing. Uh, but when you hear it explained, you see that also it can't just be from your mental planning and your mental information, but you have to make a spiritual leap of faith. It is that step of faith that was confusing to Nicodemus because, you know, sometimes they want to sort things out and that into little boxes. And, you know, faith is this thing, and, and uh, working on a car is this thing, and uh, getting to school is this thing. But he's trying to put it all together, and he's also trying to say that this isn't quite like anything that you can put a finger on and explain. He said the wind blows, and you don't really know where it comes from or how it's operating. And um, so it is a, the way the Spirit of God works in the people who are born again. So it can't just be... Us saying, okay, I'm going to be born again today, it's also a, a work of God working within us to change us. So, born to be loved. God really loves us. As, as the scripture said, He so loved us that He gave His only Son. And those of us who have kids know what it's like to, to, to worry about your kids and to, and to care about them. The one thing uh, that really inspires me to think of how God must look on us is when I see my granddaughter on the videos. She's there in India and she smiles and she just makes me so happy. I have to smile whenever I look at her. I can't stop it. It's because there's something that just lights up inside of me. And to realize that God loves you that much. That when you look up to him, he just lights up inside. When you set a connection, he smiles. He, God talks about that throughout the Old Testament, even though we look at the Old Testament, some of the judgments that are there. We see that he absolutely loved Israel. He loved Abraham. And he wanted somebody to respond to that love and to love him back. And that's what he's wanting from us. We don't have to have great things, great offerings. We don't have to put piles of money into the offering plate. We don't have to do pilgrimages to Israel. He loves us anyway. He absolutely loves you. And he wants us to start a, a life with him. Not to go running off on our own. You know how dangerous it is when a new baby runs off on his own. I mean, that's kind of a terrifying thing. They, they go for the things that are the most dangerous. Um, my daughter tells me that Stella, the first thing she goes for when they come out, after they come for a walk, 
is the bottom of her shoe after they've been walking in Bangalore. She wants to lick the bottom of the shoe. You know, it's like, what's the worst thing that you could probably have in the house is that shoe that's been walking on the streets of Bangalore. So we're attracted to that, and God wants to protect us from the things that would do us harm. But he wants to blanket it in love. I asked Gail to get, I couldn't tell a baby blanket if I, if it was there before me, except that's what it looks like one. So I had her pick one out, something that would communicate to somebody the love that is shown. And first of all, the love was shown in making this. It's obviously a homemade one. But then the love is shown when you wrap it around the baby. And oh, it's just so comfortable on the baby even senses that, doesn't it? Such when it's cold. The warmth of this blanket, the baby senses uh, this warmth. And God wants to wrap this kind of love around us. You see on Facebook all kinds of pictures of unloved animals. There was a uh, picture of a, a bunch of puppies huddled on the highway all by themselves and just huddled together because they had no one to love them. And does that take it your heart? You want to take them all in, don't you? Until they keep you up all night, maybe. But, but we, we want to love. And we need somebody to love. Those puppies needed somebody to love. The babies, the unwanted children is even worse. Uh, that are left behind that nobody loves. Maybe some of us were, felt like we were, because our parents were so busy, didn't feel as loved as we should have been. And we didn't feel that warmth of that blanket. But God absolutely loves us. And he wants to cuddle us. He wants us to become that newborn baby again. To be, uh, remember Jesus said you have to become like children. To enter the kingdom of God. And, he's, and Jesus said you must be born a new way. Because the old things pass away. The old ideas that we have are gone. When we feel that love. It's not that we read a book or we decide, we, you know, just say, well, I've, I've been so bad, I'm going to change my ways. No, it's that we feel God's love, and that's hard to do. It's hard for the calculating people to do because they're trying to figure out how this works. They, they overthink it rather than just accepting the love that comes. You know what it is when you receive love, it's overthought. Maybe it's not as, as good, but it doesn't come from the heart. Those of us who Men who go through Valentine's Day, Lord, and you can't just figure out a formula for making somebody happy. You can't just say, well, if I do this and this, then she'll be happy. That it, they really want something from the heart. That people want something from the heart on Valentine's Day. And that's a symbol for us that we should receive something from the heart. And God showed his love to us, not in a way that we would think, not just this blanket. But he also showed us, because of our sin, that he had to, to do something harsh and um, something that was dreadful and painful in order to get rid of the sin so that we could be born anew. And that was that Jesus died on the cross for us. And we're going to talk about that. And we're going to celebrate this. This is a celebration for what he did, that he loved us this much that he gave his only begotten son which is symbolized by our communion today. So this is meant not just to give us a mental ascension that, oh, yes, he died for us, or a historical moment that we recall, but a moment that changes us. And so every time we take communion, there's nothing, it's just bread and it's just wine, and just grape juice. But it changes us if we allow God to work in our heart, heart to heart with God during this time that he reminds us how much he loved us. So let's turn in our hymn books. We'll talk about this love. To page 15.
We give thanks to God for providing us with, first of all, the sacrifice that he made for us with his son, Jesus Christ, but also the symbols of bread. And of the grape juice that represents the wine, or it might be called new wine. That he gave us these gifts, and so we're thankful. We thank God for them. He gave us these gifts. That they speak to us, and speak to us in a very real way. Thankful that, that the sacrifice was made, and that God dwelt among us. And then brought us salvation. And so in your mighty, and so in the people on earth, and all the company of heaven, we praise your name, and join their ending hymn. Holy, 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 holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. So we remember that Jesus, on the night that he was to be, be betrayed, took this bread and he said, this is my body broken for you. Take and eat. This is the cup of the new covenant. Drink of it, you, drink of it all of you. That is my blood, the new covenant. So it is. They are symbols, but they are also real as we apply, but they are, they are real spiritually as we apply those concepts to our heart that he gave his body for us and he shed his blood for us. And that we receive these offerings as uh, in our hearts and we receive them as a reminder of all that God gave for us. And so in this remembrance of all your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us. As we proclaim the mystery of faith, Christ has died, Christ has risen, Christ will come again. We thank God that he loves us this much. We thank Jesus that he was obedient to the cross. And we thank that the Holy Spirit for coming and dwelling among us and making it a way for us to daily communicate with God and to enjoy His presence. So we are going to enjoy His presence, lay aside our distractions that we have in this world, that we have sins, we're going to, to take care of that. Um, so let's uh, take a moment to work in our, to allow God to work in our hearts, and if we have any sin that we need to confess before Him, to, to take care of that, and then we'll say the Lord's Prayer, and then Tom, will you help me with communion? So let's take a moment and cleanse our hearts and just savor His presence right now.
not all of us can understand what communion really means. In fact, I don't think any of us can completely understand the, the wholeness of what Jesus did for us on the cross. But we can participate. He's given us this way to participate in the sacrifice that's made for us and to internalize the love that God has given us. So let's uh, come and we will take part. Please participate.
and we'll sing our closing hymn, Victory in Jesus. Uh, three seven. Let's stand.